Welcome back to the Crypto Watch channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are still holding on to these levels of support. And while this is happening, we have just seen a nine billion dollar Bitcoin advertisement, which I'll talk about later in the video. So definitely stick around. First of all, just giving you a quick update here on the daily Bitcoin chart. And right now, this bearish divergence is still playing out on the daily time frame, which means we should not be expecting a significant amount of bullish momentum anytime soon on the daily time frame, as I've been saying pretty much every day over the last two weeks. And of course, we still have this massive area of resistance in between 24.3k to 25.2k here on the daily time frame. But but despite this being the case, technically speaking, we have not actually broken the uptrend on the daily time frame because as of right now, we are still seeing higher lows and higher highs on the daily Bitcoin chart, which is clearly an uptrend. It's just right now we're taking a pause from this uptrend, kind of like what we saw a few weeks ago back here or in this correction back here, for example. And as for significant levels of support on the daily time frame, taking a look at the Fibonacci retracement tool from swing low to swing high on the linear charts. We have the 38.2% Fibonacci level of support sitting at approximately 21.5k acting as important support here on the daily time frame. And basically, if that level gets broken here on the daily chart with confirmation, for example, with at least a daily candle close below 21.5k, then in that case, that would confirm bearish price structure beginning to form on the daily time frame. But obviously, as of right now, that has not yet happened, which means we are still seeing bullish price structure in terms of the trend here on the daily time frame. But if 21.5K gets broken, then that is the reversal signal telling us that we are potentially beginning a new bearish trend. And now if you're zooming into the shorter term, this right here is the eight hour Bitcoin to US dollar chart. And right now, the Bitcoin price is still holding onto this ascending line of support, which is sitting at around 22.2 to 22.3K approximately. So at least in the short term, this is the level of support to pay attention to. And as for resistance, looking on the six hour Bitcoin chart, taking a look at the volume profile indicator, we have this range of resistance coming into play in between 22.8K to 23K, once again, acting as resistance in the shorter term, in case we see a bit more of a bounce here. But anyway, now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the daily ETH to US dollar chart. And right now, this bearish divergence is still playing out. So once again, do not expect a significant amount of bullish momentum anytime soon on the daily time frame, as I've been saying almost every day since this top right up here. But of course, that does not mean that this bullish trend is over because we did actually see a small bearish divergence right here and we ended up seeing a pause from the bullish trend, a correction, but that didn't actually cancel the bullish trend because we ended up making a higher high later on once that bearish divergence was over. And so once again, right now, this bearish divergence is playing out, but at the moment, it's acting as a pause from the bullish trend because as of right now, we have not confirmed a break back below 1.5K. That would be the invalidation point for this bullish trend. And so at least for now, we are still seeing bullish price structure on the daily time frame. But of course, we still have this important resistance in between 1650 to 1.7K. So keep that in mind. And as for other levels of support here on the daily time frame, taking a look at the Fibonacci retracement tool from swing low to swing high, we have the 23.6% Fibonacci level sitting at around 1550, where the price of ETH has pretty much perfectly found support at just recently. But if we end up seeing a confirmed break below 1550, then once again, we could find a little bit of support at around 1.5K. But below that level, the next Fibonacci level of support is sitting at around 1450. And now if you're zooming into the shorter term, this right here is the six hour ETH to US dollar chart. And right now, as of recording this video, the price of ETH is still trading in this area of support coming into play in between 1550 to 
through around 1580 based on the volume profile indicator showing support in this area. And as for short-term resistance, we still have this price area coming into play in between around 1640 up to 1670, once again, acting as resistance in the shorter term. And now for some interesting news today, the Perth Mint just got caught trying to sell diluted gold to China. And this is a big deal because if you scroll down here, you can see the Perth Mint is facing a potential $9 billion recall of gold bars after selling diluted or doped bullion to China and then covering it up. And if you scroll down further, you can actually see that the Perth Mint is the largest processor of newly mined gold in the entire world. And it's the only mint in the world that has a government guarantee. So it is an important mint, one of the largest mints in the world for gold refinery. And so this is a big deal, not just for the Perth Mint, but for gold in general, because if you're buying gold, you are probably expecting to buy pure gold, not diluted gold that's mixed with other things like copper or silver, for example. But once again, one of the largest, most reputable mints in the entire world, one of the largest gold refineries in the entire world just got caught potentially selling up to $9 billion worth of diluted gold mixed with other metals besides gold. And so in my opinion, this basically serves as a giant advertisement for Bitcoin because in pretty much every aspect where gold fails as an asset, such as being prone to dilution or very difficult to verify or very difficult to divide or move around being portable, in just about all of those aspects, Bitcoin is the superior asset to gold. And of course, gold already has a massive demand out there because of things like scarcity and the fact that it requires energy in order to mine more of it. But Bitcoin also has those same attributes. Of course, it has proof of work like gold. And obviously, Bitcoin is scarce like gold. But as I just explained, Bitcoin in a lot of other aspects, like being prone to dilution, is a superior asset to gold. And when you consider the fact that gold's market cap is in the tens of trillions of dollars, while Bitcoin's market cap is less than half a trillion dollars, that leaves potentially a lot of room to grow for Bitcoin over the long term. But anyway, for now, if you're focused on the shorter term and you want to know how to maximize your profits in crypto, no matter if the price is going to the upside, to the downside, or simply chopping around sideways, then make sure to watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how to make money if the price is going either up or down, and the video in the bottom left shows you how to make money if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.